All right, we're going to start talking about early China. So Chinese civilization began along the Huang River, the Yellow River, and later the Changjiang, the Yangtze River, due to the rich soils provided for farming. Because in order to have a civilization, you have to have food, right? Because food makes you people live. Although China has fertile river valleys, mountains and desert make up much of the landscape and only 10% of the land can be farmed. The mountains and desert made a physical and cultural barrier isolating China. China's isolation led it to develop a unique culture and a strong sense of independence. China's first dynasty, the Shang, ruled from around 1750 BC to 1045 BC. As long as the Shang dynasty grew and spread, kings kept the territory safe by appointing local warlords to protect the regions. Now remember, this was before the year of zero. This was before, if you believe, before Christ or before Common Era. People of Shang, China honored both gods and ancestors. Shang kings used oracle bones to contact gods and ancestors before making important decisions. Chinese of the Shang Dynasty wrote in pictographs and ideographs and created objects of bronze, silk, fine ceramics, and jade. The Zhu Dynasty, which ruled after the Shang, lasted for more than 800 years and is China's longest ruling dynasty. The kings ruled under the mandate of heaven and with the help of a bureaucracy and a strong army. Under the Zhu kings, the Chinese developed irrigation systems, which is a more reliable water supply, and the use of horses in battle. Aristocrats began to fight each other for power, which eventually led to the fall of the Zhu Empire. So dragons played an important role in ancient Chinese myths and culture. That's why you see a lot of dragons if you ever visit a Chinatown or you see the Chinese New Year celebrations and different things like that. Most dragons were associated with water, probably because rainfall was vital to the survival of crops and people. Dragons were a type of rain god in early Chinese religion and their images were used in rituals performed to call the rain. They also used bronze. The bronze elephant. Bronze is an alloy or a mixture of metals made from tin and copper and sometimes other metals. As a result, bronze is stronger than tin or copper alone. Bronze is easy to melt, making it ideal for using it to cast sculptures. Casting is a process where the melted form of the alloy or metal is poured into a mold or form. The mixture hardens as it expands and completely fills the mold, which may result in fine artistic details depending on how intricate the mold is. Bronze was first used around 3000 BC. The process of making objects from bronze gradually spread from the East, China, Iran, Assyria, to Greece, and then to the Roman Empire. Eventually, iron replaced bronze in popularity because it was more easily found than copper or tin. These are oracle bones. Writing was significant to the creation of the Chinese culture. In fact, Wen Hao, the word for culture, means to become literate in Chinese. The written messages on oracle bones usually contain between 10 and 60 Chinese characters. People of the Shang Dynasty used the bones as calendars. As early as 1400 BC, the Shang calculated months that were 29 and a half days long and years that included 365 and a half days. Shang calendars were almost the same as those we use today. So here you can see some of the pictographs that we talked about earlier. So this would have special meaning, kind of like the emojis today. Um, this, these are like ancient emojis. The Chinese dragon or long looks wild and dangerous. However, the dragon represents good luck, power and prosperity. According to the Chinese view of the universe, all aspects of life are made of yin or yang. Yin represents the earth and is symbolized by the tiger, while yang represents the heavens and is symbolized by the dragon. 
The Chinese had a positive view of the dragon, but across Southwest Asia and Europe, the dragon represented evil, the underworld, and sin. So now we're going to watch a video about early China. The high period of bronze in China is also the beginning of Chinese civilization as we think of it, the Shang Dynasty before 1500 BC. The Shang Dynasty is a time when ceramics are also developed and writing becomes fixed. It's the calligraphy, both on the ceramics and the bronze, which is so startling. The Chinese made the mold out of strips shaped round a ceramic core. And because the strips are still found, we know how the process worked. The proportions of copper and tin that the Chinese used are fairly exact. Bronze can be made from almost any proportion, between, say, 5% and 20% of tin. But the best Chang bronzes are held at 15% of tin, and there the sharpness of the casting is perfect. At that proportion, bronze is almost three times as hard as copper. This is a ritual vessel in which drink is offered to the gods. The Shang bronzes are ceremonial divine objects. They express for China a monumental worship, which in Europe at that same moment was building Stonehenge. Bronze becomes from this time onwards a material for all purposes, the plastic of its age. So now what you're going to do is you're going to go into your canvas and complete the assignments for today.